Giga Texas is in line for a quick completion, and we have an inexplicable oddity cropping up in some Model Ys. This is Tesla Tidbits episode number 622 for September 11th, 2020. This show is sponsored by my supporter, Richard. If you're in the market for a new Tesla, please consider using his referral code. Ask your salesperson to use code RICHARD174 or go direct to the web link ts.la slash RICHARD174 and pick up a 1,000-mile supercharging credit for your new vehicle. To start today's show, I want to acknowledge this terrible date in U.S. history. 19 years ago today, cowards senselessly killed nearly 3,000 innocent people and injured tens of thousands more. My condolences to all those that perished or were injured in the attacks or had loved ones that did. Also, my utmost to the truly heroic first responders that put their lives on the line and sometimes lost them in trying to assist the injured. Those of us in the U.S. will never forget a moment of silence for those lost on this tragic day. Now on to the Tesla news. It's a short show this time, and we'll start at Tasmanian, where we get word of the expected timeline for Cybertruck production. It's, uh, aggressive. Probably the most aggressive schedule yet. Thanks to the legal filings Tesla had to make in Austin for its various permits, applications for incentive programs, etc., we get this little nugget on how quickly they expect to have things up and running. The original project schedule showed they expected to start rough grading, or smoothing the land, on July 17th. They then projected first dry-in on December 30th. Dry-in is a construction term for having a building shell completed to the point that weather is kept out, and any materials or work inside that could be harmed by the weather is now safe. This is the point at which they could begin installing equipment in the factory and building production lines. Lastly, first substantial completion is projected for May 1st next year, which is the point when the project is complete enough that the owner can use it for its stated purpose. It's here where the first production tests of Cybertruck could roll off the assembly lines. I don't think they will beat Shanghai for record time from start to production, as with Model 3 there was already a successful design for production. Cybertruck is a completely unknown quantity, working with brand new materials that Tesla has never worked with, and an architecture that no company has ever brought to mass production. If production vehicles roll out before the end of the year next year, personally, I consider that a massive success. Obviously, everyone is watching Giga Texas carefully, so stick with me for the latest news on Tesla's next product. The only other story today comes from The Drive, where we've got what to me is an inexplicable and inexcusable production workaround for Model Y. Before I start this story, let me be clear that I laud Tesla's ingenuity in unconventional workarounds, challenging industry norms, and the general build-the-plane-as-we-fly attitude that engineering seems to have. What we see in this article, though, is not acceptable in a $5,000 vehicle, let alone a $50,000 one. Reports coming out of a thread on Tesla Motors Club show several pictures of what appear to be wooden corner molding, and not even consistent colors of that corner molding, attached to the vehicle's liquid cool condenser that does the job of cooling various parts of the car as appropriate. A picture from another vehicle by YouTuber Derek shows the same part, but with a pair of clear spacers that appear not only more appropriate to the task at hand, but that they were actually possibly intentionally engineered for that purpose. The clear spacers, as well as the wood molding, appear to be performing the role of ensuring appropriate tension on a metal strap that provides stability to the part where it's mounted, as well as possibly shielding that metal strap from the stress of holding that part at the hard-edged corners that could wear through the strap in time. My theory on what happened here is that they ran out of the clear spacers and literally ran to the store and grabbed whatever they could to solve the issue. Suffice to say, this is inexcusable. I'd have to think there's no way in hell Elon knew about this, and whoever had the idea is likely going to find the unemployment line soon. There is no world in which this is an acceptable solution, and any owner affected should be able to take their vehicle to have a proper mount fitted. That'll do it for today's show. Thanks to all my patrons supporting the show at patreon.com slash Tidbits. And as always, a special shout out to all the super patrons supporting the show at the $10 plus level. They're Ryan Scarborough, Lee Sweet, William Henry Crew III, Dory and Steve Guberman, Ralph and Cheryl Waterhouse, Todd Sullivan, Mitch Long, Zortec LED Canada, Morvin Og, Raymond and Deborah Malkowitz, T Sportline, Vicky Kirk, Ricky Johnston, Nathan Garza, Ed Patterman, Sunil Joseph, and Brad Lettner. 
If you have feedback for me, the best way to be heard is to tweet at Tesla Tidbits and use the hashtag AskTeslaTidbits if you'd like your question to be considered for the show. Until next time, keep it charged and hit the road.